incredibly well crafted. I think they allow uh, when you uh, when you watch a child, as I did with the with the very last book, go and get her book at midnight from a bookshop uh, in Tunbridge Wells, um, and sit in the back of the car, absolutely buried inside this book, and you can see uh, you could see her creating her own pictures, her own story. Um, it's just called great storytelling, and it's uh, it's an art. I mean, to 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 tell stories uh, uh, to each other about ourselves is a human need, and uh, it gets mixed up with an awful lot of commercialism. But I think everybody knows how those books were written. Uh, Joe Rowling was a single parent pushing her baby in a pram with one hand and writing with another. Uh, there's a kind of honesty about her storytelling, too, that I think everybody relates to. Uh, well, they're all very good, so sometimes it's a bit scary because you think, <laughs> whoa, they're a bit too good in this scene. Um, <laughs> better do a bit more work. Um, it's terrific, and it's been very special working with Daniel and Rupert and Emma because, as I was just saying, you know, when I started, they were your height. <laughs> now they're his height. <laughs> And uh, because I only shoot it maybe for seven weeks every year, you know, that moment of, I don't notice the moment of them going from there to there to there to there just happens. And then of course, all sorts of other stuff has been going on in their lives uh, during that period from one film. So it's, it's like watching somebody grow up. And the great thing to me was last summer, I was here in New York and Daniel was on stage doing Equus. And I think for the first time, I was able to say to Daniel, can we go out, should we go out and have lunch? And, and we sat across a table in a restaurant and had a grown-up chat. <laughs> and that was special. This is about Sweeney Todd and um, what was it like working with Sondheim and singing with Johnny Depp. Um, <laughs> well, I, uh, I loved doing that uh, because, you know, it's like, there's Everest climate. Um, <laughs> uh, I wasn't sure that I was going to be able to do it. And I suppose I was old enough and wise enough to know that there was this moment uh, in a rehearsal room in the film studios when um, I had learned the song and just there was just me and a pianist. And the door opened and in walked Stephen Sondheim with the words, OK, let's hear it. <laughs> So I, I guess, you know, years ago, that would have been a recipe for complete disaster and nothing would have come out of my throat. But I guess I'm old enough and wise enough to know, well, what's he going to do? Fire me and probably be a good idea if I can't sing it, then fire him, get somebody else. But I mean, I, I got through it and he said it was all right. And what was wonderful was that he wasn't precious about his own music. He... He, uh, his main comment was to be much more um, casual with it and much more throwaway and don't be so religious about it.